Before we start the Dhamma talk, we will pay homage to the Buddha by reciting Namodasa three times. Namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama sambodasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama sambodasa Namo dasa bhagavato arahato sama sambodasa Today also we have to continue the chapter of Sila, the purifications of morality, according to Visuddhi Maga. Then we will start talking about Indriya Samara Sila, the guardian senses. I think everybody has known this body words. Garden the same rules. In, in Bali, we call Indriya Samara Sila. This is also a very common statement in Buddha's teaching. The lay mission when seeing a visible object with eyes, then how we should train ourselves. They are emission, nimitte gahi, apprehending, apprehending the signs. So again, we also have to know that if we don't apprehend the sign, which means we don't know the sign of man or the sign of a woman, we don't we don't apprehend the sign of man or the sign of a woman or any sign that basis of defilement, such as beauty and so forth. So sometimes we have a difficulty to cut our eyes. If we don't, don't know how to see wisely, then there will be a wholesome mind and defilement. Then here we talk about defilement. So if we like, we may have attachment. If we dislike, we may have hatred or anger. There are given many other types of defilements according to the situations. So when seeing something or somebody without apprehending the sign of man or the sign of woman, we may not have any defilements, then we were stopped. What is it merely seeing? You may have known that seeing as a seeing, right? No more than that. Now we have another Pali words, Anupantana Gahi, apprehending the particulars. So that means in on seeing, we don't apprehend the particulars. If we apprehend the particulars, there will be defilements. If we don't apprehend, we will not have, we will not have defilements. So he does not apprehend any aspect, just as hand, food, smile, laughter, talk, look ahead, look aside, and so forth. That particularizes the defilements. He apprehended only the repositives and the ultimate reality, such as Namana Rupa. Okay, one more thing here we have to know. As we all have known that CSC, in reality, it's not that simple. So, if we have defilements, then we have to overcome it. That's why. Yeah, we have uh, some statements. In this context, we should understand that when seeing a designer object, craving may arise, and when seeing a designer object, anger may arise. Not knowing the ultimate sense of the object, delusion may arise. This is an example. 
So if design of objects, we can change our minds to know as repulsives or repulsiveness. If and design of objects also, we can change as repulsiveness or maybe design of objects. If we can know as Nama Rupas is much better. So in any way, if we are unwise when seeing something, there will be lava, greed, there will be dosa, hatred, there will be moha, delusions or ignorance. Here we have one story mentioned in the Wistori Maga. The story of Venerable Mahadisa, who lived in Chitiya Hill. It happened in Sri, Sri Lanka. The Madira was going to enter in Nuradhapura. He was going for ants food there. On the way, he saw a woman. The woman smiled at him. At him. Of course, when she smiles, her teeth appear. When seeing the teeth, the Mahatera could practice repulsiveness meditation. So here, one more thing we have to know about repulsiveness meditation. In the sense of living repulsiveness, there's the there's a bleating. This is also one of the repulsiveness meditation. If there's a pulse, is there some injury or some warmth or some blisters? There will be pulse in it. This is also one of the repulsiveness objects or living beings. If some of the body part become was swallowing, swelling, sorry, swelling, sorry, swelling. Then this is also one of the repulsiveness objects. So here in his case, when seeing the teeth, he realized that <clears throat> it was repulsiveness. Then he could write as well. Okay, one more thing here we have to know. In this case, he was practicing every day, maybe. His, he, he used to practice this kind of meditation subject. That's why it's very easy for him to take that kind of object and also he could attain the ship on the spot there. It's not that simple, right? But, but in the story, it's very simple, but not that much simple. He had to practice step and steps, but because of his pre previous practice or long time habit, he could practice easily and the Sankarupa Kanyana that he could attain leadership easily. Then when he was when he, he continued his way to Anuradhapura. So the lady left the house, quarreling with her husband. Her husband went after her. When seeing Mahatira, he asked him if he had seen a woman going here and there. The error of blind, very simply. I don't know, a man or a woman. I just see a skeleton walking there. So this is very simple object. So if we can see every living being as skeleton, we may have less attachment to living beings. If we can see the living being as a repulsiveness, we may have less attachment to living beings. Similarly, if we can know living beings as a skeleton, we may have less hatred, less anger, less delusion. We can gradually sub subside the defilements. So that is the scene. When we see the design of objects, we have to understand like that, then it will be very beneficial for our practice. Then again, Yadwati Kana Medan, this is also very common Pali words. 
left, the eye, faculty, and got it. So if it is not guarding the eye and door of the mindfulness, is also forgetful, then there will be I don't the process. He also mentioned with Suri Mega how I don't the process arises in detail. But here it will be very heavy for beginners. That's why I will skip that part. Okay, now I have to introduce briefly in every single mental process, the emotion mind moment is really important. If we say wholesome or unwholesome, it is only emotion mind moment. In the I don't the process, we will see something. If greed arises, it will arise in the emotion mind moment. This is called unguarding. There are many other things talking about the one. In reality, I know there's a no define, no, there's no define that can arise in I know. But I know in the I know only I questions that can arise. Only in the mind though, the defilements can arise. According to Vitamin is the truth. But we also have to understand all the defilements come through the iron door. That's why we also say it metaphorically, arising in the iron door. Okay, briefly we have to understand not guarding or unguarding iron door. Unguarding iron door means embosion my moment when defilement arises in the embosion my moment. And there's also one simile mentioned in Wissuri Maga. Actually, not only, not, not only one, one simile, there are many other similes. Okay, they are mentioned. When the city gates are unsecure, all houses in the city are unsecure. There are no gates in the city. Then there's no security in the gate. Anybody can come and attack the city, can attack the houses in the city. Similarly, if all my moments are unguarded, right? So if my moments are unguarded, unguarded. So the main thing is, according to a Bidama, only emotional mind moments can be determined as wholesome or unwholesome. If unwholesome arise, it's unguarded. If wholesome mind arise, we can say this is guarded. Then again, <clears throat> The emotional mind movement also considered as immorality. In Bali, we call dusila. When we say dusila, that means it is immoral, like breaking very serious precepts. According to Buddha's teaching, we can say it is like a parajika offense. Or who, or who make this kind of serious offense, this is called Drusila. Then we also have another one, forgetfulness, Muta Satya. That means no more mindfulness. Then Anyana, delusions or unknowing. We cannot know the truth. We cannot know the ultimate reality. It is also called impatience, akhanji. It is also called idleness, called sacha. So these are 
the name of, like a synonym of the defilements that can arise in the embolism mind moment. Briefly, if we talk about Indriya Samarasila, we have eyes. If we are wise, there will be wholesome minds when seeing something. If we are unwise, there will be unwholesome minds. Although we have eyes, we have to behave or act like a blind man when we see something. Similarly, when hearing something, we cannot train ourselves very well, then there will be the defilements, the defilements. If we hear, smell, taste, touch, and think in any types of mental process, they arise in our thought process. If we are unwise, it will be unwholesome. If we are wise, they will be wholesome. So we have to train ourselves. Let me go to train our eyes to be wiser. We have to train our ears to be wiser. We have to train our nose to be wiser. We have to train our tongue to be wiser. We have to train our body to be wiser. We have to train our minds to be wiser. Otherwise, every day we are accumulating our whole sentence. If we can train all the sense roles, or if we can guard our sense roles, we are secure. One more thing here from time to time, the Buddha said that when the defilement comes, it's like a bandit or robots. If bandits will come to our house, if we open the door, they will enter and when they will take our, our properties. Sometimes they will force us to give our properties. If we, if we don't give them, they will beat us. Similarly, when the defilement come into our thought process, they take away our our, whole, our wholesome minds, wholesome thoughts. Then they also torture our minds, but we suffer from our minds, our mental process. So that is why we have to train all these sense doors, we have to guard the sense doors in order that we may have more wholesome minds in our daily life. Now we are going to use the next part. Is about Ajiva Parisuri. In reality, we have already talked about livelihoods according to Dikanikaya. Although I say Dikanikaya, we can find the same things in many other texts. Okay, now we will introduce the Padimaka rules first. So there are six Padimaka rules, six rules in Padimaka. So one, the first Parajika is claiming the no existence, the, the, higher, attain, the higher attainment with evil wishes. That is one of the rules. There are some meditator or orient person especially here Bhikkhu. They will declare that they have attained hardship, they have attained psychic power, they have attained jhana, the Vimokha liberation, something like that. Although they don't have any quality like that. They will do it for gay and fame. By attaining this kind of untruth attainment, if they can earn or if they can get photographs, 
this is wrong livelihood. Then again, too, the fifth Sangatisisa is acting as go between. Actually, this one also, actually in our previous part, also we have already explained what is this. Right? Okay, anyway, now we have to talk about this. As a bhikkhu, we must not bring any message to anybody except in Dhamma Papas. So this Sangatisisa rule is very, very strict. Whether, whether we do it knowingly or unknowingly is offense. If we do, if we act as go between. Then again, three. Referring to oneself, he says, the bhikkhu who lived in your monastery is an arahat. So this is also one of the things we have to consider. Not only that there are many other ways bhikkhu may use. For example, like the bhikkhu who wear red robes is an arahat. I mean, he himself is wearing red robes. Then he may say, the bhikkhu who, who use clay bow is an arahat. He's using clay bow. That's why he just declared like that. He's not directly talking to lady bodies. I'm an arahat. He didn't say, I'm an arahat. But he just said indirectly. So if they understand is what we have here offense. If they didn't understand, it will be okay. Not, not that heavy offense. But anyway, as when he speak, this is also wrongdoing. Then four. The 39th Pajitiya is asking the donor to offer him but here, he may a bhikkhu, superior foods without any signals. Okay, here, superior food or choice foods. We have to understand such as geese, molasses, or jaggery, or sugar, or skin, like honey, wine, butter, right? Then any kind of special food like that, including meat fish, all the things can be considered as a choice fruit. So without any sickness, the bhikkhu must not ask the devotees to offer him. There was some exception. His, his like a family members, like a brother, sister, parents, okay. Okay, the main point is, in this rules, Bhikkhu are not allowed to ask the donor to offer this and that, especially about choice foods or special foods. Then five. The same rules for a bhikkhuni as mentioned above. This is the bhikkhuni rules. Say as before, a bhikkhuni must not ask any choice foods from the donors. Then six. The 37th Sikhiya is asking the donor to offer him being curry and so on without any sickness. Okay, here we have to know the Sikhiya rules again. If we ask devotee to offer meat or special foods, it is Pajitiya. But if we ask only to offer like a bean soup or just normal soup or any kind of like a vegetarian, a vegetarian curry or something like that, then it is it's also called offense. So bhikkhus are not allowed to do this kind of things without sickness. When we are sick, it will be allowable for us to 
ask the devotees to offer this kind of food. Then again, we have to continue with this one. <clears throat> it is three kuhanams. Kuhanam is hypocrisy or scheming. So we have many different types of long, long livelihoods. And these three are very common. Sometimes people also misunderstand. It's a good thing to do. Okay, here we have to think about Pajaya Pati Sevana Kuhana. Scheming by rejecting requisites. So here in this part, we have to understand the Sambikus will reject whatever devotee offers. This is not good habit. Then I don't need, okay, if we don't need sometimes so if too much, we can reject, it doesn't matter. Sometimes we have got many things more than enough. Then I've already got this one. That's why we reject, it doesn't matter. But sometimes, although devotee offers, he does not have this kind of things. He also needs this kind of things. He just cheat people, right? He, he behave or he acts or pretends as if he don't wish to get anything like that. That's a call. Kuhana. Pajaya Kuhana. For example, people will offer the food. Like he may say, okay, don't offer this kind of food. The normal food is good enough, for example. And they will offer special ropes. Now, I don't need this kind of ropes. Just normal ropes is okay. Then sometimes they offer, they are going to offer the monastery or a Belgium. They may say, I don't need Amuha is good enough for me. Right? Something like that. So if something is suitable for ourselves, we have to accept that kind of donation. Sometimes too much, that's when we reject, it will be different. So there are many other cases like that, but later, when he get something good, or maybe something like if he wished for that, then he will say, okay, I want to support your faith. You are sad, that's why I will accept this, your donation. In reality, he just wants to get that one. That's why he accepts it. So, <clears throat> sometimes they will say, okay, the bandit, whenever you need ropes, please ask me. Then, ah, let me, he has a lot of ropes, that's why he reaches, it doesn't matter. Then, ah, I don't need them, but then, oh, he's a, he has a lot of contentment, no greed. Could be have they may think like that. If they have more stronger faith in him, more stronger confidence with him, then they will, would, they will offer him more and more. So anyway, there are many, many things like that. Right? Do gain faith from devotees. He will say many different things. He will reject many Roads, foods, monasteries, or residence, or medicine. Okay, in this case, we we might make th this is a he has contentment, but you know, not because of contentment, he's trying to make himself upgrade. Sometimes he makes only very poor quality robes, not wearing good robes. Similarly, he may use very, very poor quality, very, very poor quality of the food, medicines, and also living place. Now, people think that he has, a, he has very strong contentment. He has very less wish, very less desire, very little desire. People, miss, people can understand like that. They would offer more and more like that. More devotee will come. This is also a kind of attractions. When many people come, there will be more donors, more invitations, he becomes famous. 
So if we have this kind of EV wish, and if we reject all the requisites, this is called bacteria predisivana kukana. If we have a lot of devotees, if we gain a lot of things by doing like, like this, it's also called wrong livelihood. Then samanta japana kukana. Scheming by indirectly talking about the higher attainment. So, in this case also, we have to understand similar things as mentioned in Padimaka. So there are many, many ways to say like that. Then, as I have said before, if, uh, if he wear this kind of robes, he's a, you know, he's very good in morality, very good in sila, very good in samadhi, very good in wisdom. And he has attained this kind of power, this kind of attainment, attainment something like that. So the people who use this kind of cup, this kind of bowl, this kind of kill, this uh, key, this kind of water feather, this kind of belt, this kind of celebrity, then he is a, you know, he is a, like a rat, something like that. <clears throat> so uh, similarly, so we, we may say like a, oh, Ubajaya of that Bhikkhu is a rat, Dhamma from this Bhikkhu is a rat, something like that. Then, there are many, many other ways to express indirectly why he used, the property he used, and also the living place he lived, those of the people he associates with, and many other things right? he can express. So, associating with this kind of people is our hat. The person who associates with this kind of people is our hat, something like that. So by saying this kind of things, also people can people also think, oh, is it a hat? Right? So sometimes, okay, the last one. In Riyya, yeah, so Iriya Patan Sanisita Kuhana, scheming depending on deployment of both terms. So one more thing here we have to understand. Sometimes, you know, when we are alone, we are just not really just normally. But when we are in public, in the assembly, then we just close eyes and like in meditating, behaving like meditating, you know. If really meditating is it okay, but it should not be for gain, oh, sorry to gain faith from the devotees. Sometimes when we are going for Bindapada, walking slowly, you know, you may have seen some people, they are walking very slowly. They are when they rest, yeah, very slowly, right? Raising their leg, moving forwards, and on the lower end down, and present on the ground, something like that. They, they, pray, they are very mindful when going for Bindapada. In reality, According to Vinaya rules, we must not go very slowly. We it mentioned we must go neither slow, neither too slow, nor so fast. Medium speed when we are walking or going to Pindapata. Okay, there are some people they were use special body posture, pretending themselves as a good bhikkhu or Meditator. It's called Iriya Patan Sanisita Kuhana. Not only that, there are some bhikkhu, they will show their qualities, they have not, what they don't have, for the such as virtues. So they are unvirtuous, but they pretend as virtuous. They don't have concentration, but they pretend as they have very strong concentration. But they don't have faith or confidence, but they pretend as they have faith or confidence. They don't have wisdom, 
but they're brilliant as they have wisdom. Similarly, they don't have Dhamma knowledge, but they're brilliant as, as if they have Dhamma knowledge. So if we are doing this kind of things, as a core, wrong livelihood. So this is the first part we have to understand in our community. If somebody is behaving like that, we have to remind them. We must live normally. Don't attract people to gain or to, for gain or for faith. If we have, if we might try to attract people with the wrong ways, then this is also wrong livelihood. So whatever they offer is not allowable for the bhikkhus. Now we were continuous about talking. So there are many different kinds of talking. It mentioned in Visodhimaga. We can also find the same things in many other textbooks. Okay, now, the first in Lepana in Pali, we call it talking. So, what about Lepana? We have many, many different types of Lepana, many different types of talking. One, initial talking about donation. So this means like a big way inner shades or hands that devotees do offer him. When devotees come to the monastery, the bhikkhu may introduce himself. Uh, I am this kind of person. Right? I'm like this kind of educated person. I'm in, have I'm working for this monastery that long, something like that. So introduce you himself to the devotees. Also, then they, he may ask them, do you come here to invite bhikkhus? Or do you come here to offer? He may ask these kind of things. The how, many, how many bhikkhus were invited? Or how many, oh, I'm sorry, how many bhikkhus will you be invited? Or will you invite? Uh, if so, okay, I, I can also come along with you. Then, he may say this kind of things to devotees, make friendship with the devotees. This kind of initial talking is not allowable for the people. And the devotee asks, Bandi, where can I, can I see the airports or where can I invite the bhikkhu? <coughs> for example, like in Pau Doya, some devotees has never been to Pau Doya. They didn't know where to, they do not know how to, they do not know how to invite the bhikkhu, where to invite the bhikkhu? They may ask, where can I invite the bhikkhu? Then we will guide them to go to their office. The office will arrange. If they ask, we can answer. This is a difference. Without asking, we just try to make friends and try to talk with them, try to persuade them. This is a wrong talking. By approaching devotees like that, if they offer, this is a wrong livelihood. And not only that, they also mention they can also invite me. The minister also invite me. A few days ago, minister also come and offer me. A few years ago, uh, this kind of female person also come to see me, something like that. If we attract people like this, this is called Alapana. By attracting like that, if people can offer, this also wrong livelihood. Them to Lepana talking. This means when somebody asks, the body will ask, where he should invite the bhikkhu, for example, then he will initiate him to offer, to, uh, to offer him. I'm like, maybe if, <clears throat> for example, like, uh, sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> so let me point he may ask Bandi, where is that Bahamahatira for example? They may ask. Eh? When they ask, 
we may say, oh, then I have, uh, as I'm in, uh, I'm also very close to him, something like that, yeah? you know? Then, if mostly whenever he was invited, I also have to come now, something like that. He just hints people to offer him, right? So similarly, then, oh, he also, the king also offer him, approach him, he, they also come to see me, for example, that cannot, that cannot say. So that means he, the devotee asks another bhikkhu, he then introduces himself to the devotees. Then again, Sanapana. When we talk about Sanapana, instead of giving Tamil talk, he may give more favor to the devotees to talk. So if we give Tamil talk, the people will not be happy, or the maybe he will, then they may not listen very carefully. That's why they allow people to talk many other complicated things or useless things. That's called Sanapana. Then Onlapana, talking up or a stolen. So in the case of Onlapana, the bhikkhu were addressed. Uh, the bhikkhu were addressed the positions of the rank of the devotees in order that they may have better relationship. For example, like, uh, oh, he's a, like uh, uh, the well, uh, managing director of this company, something like that. He just called managing director. He didn't say devotee or dayaka, something like that, right? So in reality, we just say devotee must be devotee. He will be manager writer in his company. He will be boss in his company. But when we see his devotees, we have a responsibility to guide them according to the Dhamma. That's all, no more than that. So if they say, oh, his boss, uh, and, and boss, well, like, owner of this company, owner of that company, manager writer, CEO, something like that, you know, rank position or rank or something like that. Not only that, according to politician, Politics, political situations or, or political ranking, and he may say, oh, he is a minister, a prime minister, or he's like a, a, a secretary, a general secretary, something like that, you know? We will have that kind of the talking to the devotees. When we see a like, CEO of one company, goes, oh, CEO will come. In reality, we talk should call his name or her name. It will be more convenient for the people. If somebody didn't know, they have two names, for example, like in Myanmar, we also have many similar names. Even, you know, Kovita, many Kovita in Paudoya. If they say, who is Kovita? Then they can say, Selim Kovita. This is my name, right? Then if Nana Kovita, they are with their, their living place or the place they come from. Anyway, the main thing is, Sometimes there are two CEO, there are two people with the same name. Then which which one? I know a CEO at the time we can we can use the ranking or something like that. In this case, it will be exception. If we are going to flatter out people, make their role higher than Biku, this is the problem according to this Onapana. So by talking that also. If we can earn some money or some donations, this is wrong livelihood. Some more lepana, continuous taking up. It was the same as before, continuous. No, not only one time, no by accidents. Continuous. Similarly, six, we have another one, six. Unahana. Persuading. So here, we have many different ways of persuading devotees. We also have to know proper way of conversation or speaking with the devotees. But sometimes in some places, you may also have seen, every day they have some ceremony. Then whenever devotee come, they will remind, last year we have this amount of money for this ceremony. Right? This year we haven't got that amount yet, something like that. Then again, sometimes there are some bhikkhus, they were hence the devotees. 
Let's hear you have already offered this amount of requisites this year. Why, why don't you offer like this? Are you okay or something like that? No, they may start that kind of conversation, hinting them to offer. Then he may also say, we should not say to offer this or that. If donors are clever, they will offer. Right? So, actually he hint many other things. Then not only that, we also, there are many other things. For example, like conceiving the people, bringing sugar cake. I mean, oh, what, what are you bringing? What do you bring? Then devotee will say, I'm bringing sugar cake. Sugar cake? Is it sweet? This hint, no? is it sweet? And yes, yeah, sweet. When you do what you take, then, then they may offer. So just hint. Then sometimes there are many, many other things. They will say, right? They will hint or they persuade people to offer. Then some more, okay, similar to that, we also have some more, some more, some more hand up, can you help the three again? So, by three again and again, it's called Samohana. So he say many other things. But persuading to get one thing. Couldn't you ask me? Then eight. Okachana. Suggestion. Present devotees. All right. Then when they have property, they just offer me something like this. They flatter people. I remember one of the statements by Paul Siaruji in this part. You know, he said in one time I talk, this is in Bamis. When a bhikkhu prays Dona, the Dona become poor. Then when the devotees praise the bhikkhu, the bhikkhu, the bhikkhu collapse. Because he gives Dhamma a lot, he got sick, finally he cannot give Dhamma anymore, right? Similarly, when Bhikkhu prays the his devotees or donors, the donor were often more and more. Finally, he became poor. He becomes poor. This is the one thing he, he mentioned in one Dhamma talk. From time to time, we, I also talk to my donors. Whenever they say something like that, when they say, oh, Bandit, you are very smart, something like that, I just talk, okay, don't praise me too much. I just say what Pastor has said. Anyway, so we are, <clears throat> we have the Okachana. They also mention about the Tila Kanurika story and the Visuri Maga. So they are mentioned the a pious or a generous woman who gave a gift in large qualities to the monks is mentioned in the story illustrating how monks were sometimes both of their patrons. For example, like, oh, that, that girl is a very, very smart, very generous, because her mother is also generous. You know, in her mother's time, she offered me a lot. When she offered, it's not very that, that simple. When she offered rice, he just offer a bowl full rice, not only a cup of rice. When she offer honey, he just offer a pot of honey, something like that. He flat her like that. When he offer the wine, she offer wine, you know, like a, a gallon of wine, something like that. So he may flatter the devotees or praise devotees too much. Then this is called Okajana. Samukajana is very, uh, we can say, continuous suggestion, right? See, similar to previous previous one. Okay, so now again one more, and then the next one, Anupiya Bani. Um, okay, in gratitude, gratitude chapter, in gratitude chapter. This means. 
So without any consideration about the truth or the Dhamma, he tends to talk for the devotees for a better relationship. For example, like a, you know, like a lovely words, very polite words. We can also say like that, very, very polite words. Anupiya Bani, you know, Anupiya means lovely, you know, he says talk about lovely things. Just very polite things. Sometimes, you know, some of the truths, some of the truths are very bitter, very cross, undesirable. Sometimes we also have to say undesirable truths to the devotees. So for him, in his case, he will not consider about the truth. He will just talk, but devotee wish to hear. This is the problem. I remember my Bali teacher, one time, one devotee brought in and talked about Bhajanga Sutta. The Bhajanga Sutta, actually, he tells wish to get approval from my teacher. See, I am chanting Bhajanga Sutta because I'm, I'm not very that much heavy. I'm chanting Bhajanga Sutta seven times a day or four times a day, something like this. Then my teacher replied very simply. It's not chanting. When you get sick, you must listen. Is it listening, not chanting? You say like that. The devotee dislike him. Anyway, this is the truth. Right? So sometimes the truth is not desirable for the listeners. Anyway, we have to guide them to have better life, to choose better, or to choose better. Okay, another one. This is called Nupiya Bani, right? So another one is Chadu Kamiyada Flattery. So let me also, if also, you know, he make himself, Bhikkhu will make himself lower as a devotee's superior. This is called Chadu Kamiya. So again, <clears throat> Sometimes we are humble. In this case, it will be exception. Sometimes, you know, some devotees are talking, you know, they are they, based on confidence, they are talking about the Dhamma or meditation or something like that. We just listen as if we don't know anything. And we, huh? Just listen normally. Just humble for their happiness. In this case, it will be exception. But here in this case, but here in this, Chandu Kamara said, talking, not giving silence, talking. Uh, he's smarter than me or something like that. Of course, there are some truths, true, true, true facts, for example, like uh, in the education, so he's a good in education. Of course, there will be other weakness. He is a good in, well-educated, but there will be some other weakness. He is very good in social skill. There will be many, many other weakness. So anyway, the main thing is we just Talk about people's strong points too much. Then also talk about our weakness too much. Or maybe we just make ourselves lower, inferior to the devotees. Some are very polite, you know. Then this also can be called the Chadu Kamiyata. Next one is Mokha Supriyata, being supri. This one is also, talking about less truths, more useless things. They also mention one simile about the bean soups. And some of the beans, if we cook well, if we, if we cook, some of the beans are not well cooked, not soft enough. Some, of, some, some beans will be very soft, some are not that much soft. It depends, okay? It depends on what kind of beans. Sometimes it depends on, okay, practically, yeah, what happened in Selena. Yeah. Recently, we have uh, bean soups or maybe like a boiling bean or maybe some fried bean or something like that. It's not the salt because of the water we use. Now when we take the water, it becomes salt. Okay, anyway. So if, in, here we have a lot of limes in the water. That's why not that much good quality. And we have to change the water from the lake, from the dam, 
with what I've it, it, it can be, become better. Anyway, but the main thing is cooking beans. I think many of ladies may know that one, how to cook beans. Sometimes it cook, it thoroughly cook, sometimes not that much salt, right? So similarly, sometimes he, he will say many different things, but all, all the things are useless. Not that are useful for the listeners. Not that are useful for improvement. This is called Moga Sukata. Then, okay, the, the last part of this one. Pari, Batiata, Fondele. Also, we have already talked about that one in previous talk also. Now they are taking care of the children. This one's already said before. We also have many other wrong livelihoods. Okay, mention here. Nemetika. Okay. The sign to others, or nimita, giving a sign, or nimitika gamma, education, or hinting for the gay, and so forth. This is called nimita. Okay, one more thing we have to know that. As we have mentioned before, right, do you come here, do offer food, something like that? Yeah, in this case, do you bring a sugar, sugar cake, right? I have mentioned before. Similarly, now, when you see the devotees bringing food, the bhikkhu may ask, do you bring the food? Are you going to offer it? Asking this kind of question. This is a hint in people to offer. If we have this kind of hint in, then this they will offer, but the ones are not right. This is not, not right livelihoods. It's a wrong livelihoods. Sometimes he may ask, right? For example, <clears throat> what kind of food do you get? What kind of food can I get? For example, hint of this kind of things. This also can be considered as nimita, nimita kama. Then ovasana, or ovasa, and ovasa kama, given indications or ovasana kama indirect talk. Okay, here I have given I have given one simile in the uh, in, in, in the scripts. How can I believe that you have a counts and cups? If you have count and cups, people must have make. This is the example. So that means when devotee come, the bhikkhu may ask, do you have counts and cups? He may say, yes. How can I believe you don't have, if you have, then we make. If you have milk, you may offer the bhikkhu. Then we can, we can drink milk. He may ask, he may say this kind of thing, this is called avasana. Then, there are many other things, you know, she they, they just, okay, we have a one, talk, we also say one story, right? Okay, and now we have the one, another one, round about this, the, another one. Samanda Jabba, round about talk. This one is like a, this also a hint in. Yeah, there I mentioned the story of Kulubaka. So there is a bhikkhu who will go for ants food to a house. His behavior and his lifestyle is not that much good. There are not many people wish to offer him. Then when he approached one house, the entire house, the lady, the lady does not wish to offer him an asset. There's no rights. Then he also say, okay, I have to call us, I have to get some rights from my neighbors. So he, she left the house, her house. Then the vehicles wish to get foods. Actually, okay, if that kind of thing happened to me, I will leave the house actually. If no, there's no, Right? No house, no, no, own out the house in, in the building. 
I should not sit there. I should not stand there. I will leave. Mostly, this happened to us frequently, right? Mostly, if we, as well, you not only not only I'm we, which is a we, right? Because many of big who do like this. If there's no householder, no owner of the house, we will not work there. We just leave the house. Now, in his case, the lady has already left. He was alone in the house. Nobody's there. He didn't leave. He looked around the house and finds there are a jar of rice, a sugar cake, a jaggery, a salty fish, and also geese. He also knew that the lady, the lady does not wish to offer him. Then he was waiting. When the lady came back and said, Oh, no, I cannot find the rice. No, sorry, the, the lady said, I cannot find, the, I cannot get the rice from my neighbors. Today, I think I should say sorry. Hmm? Yeah, he's, he, he's saying like that, then we could reply. I have seen a like sign on the way to your house. And the lady asked, when are they? Then he said, he says, he has seen a snake on the way. Just hinting, you know, just for hinting, he just used this simile. Actually, when he was waiting, he just thinking about how to reply the lady. Uh, how to talk about uh, the, how to hint, how to like bully the lady, we can say like that, right? Then that snake I have seen is as big as the sugar cane near the door. Then the lady kept the sugar cane near the door, that's why, hide under the door, that's why she, she, nobody can see, but they had already seen it. Then I have to find a stone to throw at the snake. The I see I see a stones as big as a jaggery, the the jaggery in the basket. And I pick up the straw and throw at the snake. It spread out a hook. It is as big as the salty fish. Then it was going to bite me and open the mouth. I could see the teeth. The teeth are as white as the, the rice in a jar. The saliva mist with the poison that come out from his mouth is like a geese. He say all these things to the lady. Then the lady had to offer sugar cake, also offer the jaggery, had to cook, cook the rice and salt the fish, offer him. Also, have to offer the keys like this. This is called parikata. Okay, so here we have uh, the problem of the roundabout talks. Eh? I have this is some I think, misunderstanding maybe. Roundabout talk two, two times already. Parikata, another one is also roundabout talk. Repeatedly talking about the properties he was to get. This is called parikata. So these are talking, improper talking to the lady bodies. We can say improper hinting to the lady bodies. If we hint to offer, and if they offer, this will be wrong livelihood. Oh, one more thing here about the hinting. For it sound like we are going to build a monastery that we may clear the land, then their devotee will come and ask, Pandi, what are you doing? I'm mm. making the land. For what, Pandi? Then they may say, I'm, uh, we, I'm going to build a monastery. Do you have a donors? No, 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 yet. In case there will be donors. That's why I'm in, clearing the land. And he may say that kind of things. This is also called hinting. But that kind of hitting is allowable. 
you know, if we, especially what about the food or medicine, both our sickness, no hints. For our ropes, also no hints, right? Okay, another one, eight. Nebisika, military. So military also can divide it into one more group. Okay, here we have a kosana, abuses of others. Okay, later we have to talk about abusive words according to Winnea. Okay, here I will introduce some types of abusive words. For example, some of the sickness or disease, diseases. But by using diseases also, we can say this is abusive word. For example, you a leper, for example. Right? This is also abusing, this is also a kosaka. Sometimes the lineage or the clans or the race. For example, like, uh, um, like when you Chinese are like this, you Vietnamese are like that, you Burmese are like that. You know? When we say like this, this is also called abusive words. Or a kosa. There are sometimes like uh, the, the offense, for example, like you thief, something like that, you are like a thief, something like that. this kind of thing is called a kosaka. Okay, anyway, by using any kind of abusive words, this is called a kosaka. So people must not abuse like this, right? But must not say like that. Then two, one banana. So woman I is like a this is also with like a desperation. It's also kind of thoughts. Okay, we can also say like this, right? This is a contamin or something like that. Right? It's very similar to like another one say garhana, reproaching. Contamin, like he's a faithless. Especially in this case. If the devotee didn't offer or donor didn't offer us, he will criticize or he will condemn. He's faithless, no faith, no donations. Something like that, right? So if we have this kind of saying, then this is also called <clears throat> like by bullying or by saying like this, if some people some devotee offer, this is also wrong like this. Then we have uh, another one. This is the Okipana, snapping. As communicating devotees. Okay, here one more thing like uh, sometimes if they don't offer, he's not my devotees. That is right. From time to time, I also talk to many meditators, surely. Even in an interview, from time to time, I also talk, if they want to change the teachers, meditation teacher, I say, yes, it's okay, no problem. Then they say, Bani, are you angry? No, this is not. Why have to be angry, right? As teacher, no choice. Whoever come to me is my teacher. I'm mean, their teacher. If they don't want to come to me, okay, I'm free. Let them go to another teacher, it doesn't matter. So the main thing is, sometimes, you know, they were excommunicate. Okay, but you may you may also have, have seen many things like if you go to that monastery, don't come to me anymore. That kind of bullying, you know, that kind of bullying. This is very 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 bad. Then similarly, now on seeing the faithless, he say, "Hard faithful person." He has very strong faith, you know, like a something, right? Improper. When hearing that, he may feel shame. There are many other cases like that. Then you also may say, like, uh, oh, he's a, you know, he's a very great donor, very, 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 very generous person, something like that. Now, it's more keeping up, cutting your snapping. So, on seeing faithless, you may say, what's a great faithful person? I also say, on seeing a stranger man, what's a great donor? When you say like this, it is also called Samokhipana. When hearing that, 
the donor wire fee share I may offer obviously some black guy. You know, he just bully the devotees in order that they will not stand what the offering. They cannot live what the offering. Okay, another one, Kipana, really cool. Actually, this is all like a, making a joke, right? It's very, very clear, making a joke. It's no use eating the past karma, something like that, you know? They are eating past karma. It's no use. It's you, they are useless. Just eating the past karma. They don't have present karma. You know, this kind of things is called kipana. Then, sankipana, kananyua, radical. Then, when the devotee comes, he may say, he may make a joke, right? Eh? Yeah. Who say he's not offering? He's always offering the ones, no, whoever comes to him. In modern community, we can say like he's always offering sorry, you know. Sorry, I don't have to, I don't have anything. There's a call, right? It, it kind of bullying the devotees. Then Papana. Papana is denigrating. Denigrate. If somebody denigrates, he may say, this is a kind of, you know, like a defaming other people, right? So that means he is not a giver, something like that. Then some Papana, continual integration, or the denigration, sorry. So denigration, in this case also, <clears throat> like a, <laughs> you know, like a defaming devotees, again and again, whenever there's a gathering, he may talk about his weakness, this is called Papana or Sambapana. If we repeatedly or again and again, it's called Sambapana. Then another one is Awana Harita Te Bearing. So here, okay, there are some Beku when they whenever they go to different places, they will bring the story of the head devotee. So this devotee is not good, he didn't offer, he just offered like this. The devotee is not very good. He, just tell many stories to devotees. Now, on hearing that, they become scared, you know? If I don't offer, he will bring the same story to another place, another village, another city, then they have to offer. Now, when they offer also, he keep talking the same things, you know? And they offer me for fear of complaint, not because of faith. He spread many rumors, huh? many rumors, many different news from village to village, house to house, family to family. The family, they become scared and they offer him. Although they offer, is not free. Keep talking. Okay, next one is Parapichi Mansi Kata, backbiting. But in reality, but I don't hear Mansikata means actually back eating, actually. Eating other people's back. So in this case, the, big, the, the, the receiver will speak ill of devotees or donors in, the, in his absence. But the receiver will speak goodness of donors in his presence. We have two faces, right? In the presence, in the presence of donors, he say he's very great, very good. In the absence of donor, he's very bad. This is called parapeti masikata. So these are called the speaking, round like the hoot. So today we made a very long list about from Lapanai to now, very long list. 
of speaking. Sometimes the way we speak is not very good for donors. Although we can get what we want, what we wish, what we desire, it's not that much beneficial for the donors. It a bit who talks or say this kind of things too much. It's also by saying all these things, devotee may offer him because of good relationship or because of fear, then it's wrong like bhikkhus. All the properties are not allowable for the bhikkhus. Then we have the last part about Nabina Lava Jigisada. Here we have many different types of Seeking king for king. Right? We can also say, a Basuyan king, a Basuyan king with the king, sorry. This is like, uh, it's changing the properties. For example, the Bhikkhu will go for Bina Bada, and the first house of a Kari, Bean Soup, for example. Then the second house, he will offer the princess. The second house will offer him by part like a meat or fish or any, any, any good food. He may serve it. He may go for peanut butter. If he, if he has received something he dislikes, he may offer the food to another house. He will get good food from the house. This is also destroying their faith, destroying people's faith. This is called Lavina and Lavanti Kisanata. So that means when we are going for Pinta Bada, we must not give any food to devotees or the houses, the family. Especially expecting the game. Actually, in say in the Pachitya rules, we have one is again Pachitya. We must not exchange properties with the lady bodies. It's offense. If we exchange the properties with the samritas or bhikkhus, it will be allowable. For example, like a, I have a del and telephone. I don't wish to get telephone. I just need to have either way to get a computer or a laptop. This is just hinted. In this case, it will be exception. It will say, oh, you have a laptop. Then you don't need laptop, right? I have I, I need laptop. I have I have a telephone. Then shall we exchange? If they exchange like that, it will be the problem. We are not allowed to exchange like that. We can hint. I have telephone, but I don't have computer. I know I need computer. I don't need telephone. If somebody has their, their computer, if they want to if they want to exchange, then they will come to ask the Bhikkhu to exchange. It will be exception. Okay, the main thing is Labina Lava and Sanada is you know, offering things to devotees by expecting gain. This is called Ravina Lava Chikisanata, like investment. So, I think this is the last part of the Dhamma talk today. So, today we have already explained about wrong livelihood according to Visuddhi Mata. This is the last part of wrong livelihood. Then there are also many other wrong livelihood mentions in Dikhanikaya. It also mentions Dikhana right? Improper livelihoods. Brahma Jala Sutta and Samya Pala Sutta in Dikhanikaya. Because of fine there. Actually, I have already mentioned many of them in the wrong livelihoods in Ajivatamaka Sila. 
Et, et beaucoup live or survive by doing all these kind of wrong livelihoods. Then what about devotee offer? He cannot, he shall not use. If he use this also, ahosan, apathy, offense. Then it also is also very strict for the bhikkhus. By doing wrong livelihoods, especially like a you know, persuading, game with persuading, uh, the persuading, game with the game, for example, that kind of things. If the bhikkhu has destroyed the devotee's faith, then as long as he was using, accepting their donations, this is the offense. As long as he's using, the, the donations of our mind, the family is offense. Then when can we recover from this offense? When the family become a hatch or sarapana, especially a sarapana with the, the family member, all the, the, the devotees become sarapana, they have real faith, true faith in Bodhas teaching. At the time, he may report to the Bhikkhu, Pandi, please accept our donation. We are not like before. We have already attained Nova Hood. That is why please, us, please accept our donation. At the time, no offense. You can understand like this. So, we have we don't have any we don't have any other solutions for this kind of wrong livelihoods for people. So the first part when we talk about Ajiva Tamaka it will be for lady bodies, it also can be for bhikkhus. But this part can be also for both lady bodies or for bhikkhus. Right? For lady bodies, some of the information will be useful. If they can follow and practice all this, uh, if they can follow or practice well, then their lifestyle will be better. So, okay, next week we have to continue talking about Pajasana Sila Sila. It will take time anyway. So, so far we have already talked about Padimokha Samara Sila, India Samara Sila, and also Ajiva Parisuri Sila, three types of Sila. For about Padimokha Samra Sila, we don't explain very much in detail because it will be Padimokha rules. All the Padimokha rules. All the, all the Kanaka. That's why it will be too wide. As Bhikkhu, we have to study. We have to follow the practice. Now, for about India Samra Sila, eyes, ear, nose, channel, body, and the mind, we have to train in order that the defining may not arise in our thought process. Now, what about Ajiva Parasuti? Purifications of livelihood. We have to follow many rules to purify our livelihood. If we could do it, we can say we are moral, we are virtuous. Then, based on that, we have to connect this practice in Samatha Vipassana and so forth. Okay, now, as conclusions, we will all be able to practice the three trainings, and we are able to realize the final associations and the suffering, Nirvana. Okay, um, Siado, the first question, Vandami Siado. The first question, when a person has the three kuhanas, hypocrisy mm -hmm. and scheming, what kind of unwholesome mental formation are these? Mm -hmm. Actually, all these things come from greed, you know? Greed, or the dishonest, you know? Dishonest. Actually, most of the, we can say like a Maya Satya, you know? In, in Bali, we call Maya Satya. Maya Satya means they cannot cheat him, or like pretend or hypocrites. So, this one will come from Lava. We can say Lava mental process. Okay? Okay. This one? Okay. The second, what will be the karma result if a bhikkhu always has hypocrisy or scheming mind? Mm, so, the results, okay, 
Actually, as long as he has this kind of tendency, it's wrong livelihoods. If wrong, wrong livelihoods, we can imagine how will be our future, right? The Kamarasa will be, it cannot be good destination, it can be bad destination. Rather than as like a, you know, if people come to know the truth, he cannot survive anymore. Before knowing the truth, people were some him well. When they come to know the truth, they will not serve anymore. So in the present or in this very life also, it's not really very good. In the future also, it cannot be good. Okay. okay. Thank you, Siado. The next question. Dear Siado, it is very common that many devotees will go around checking bhikkhus, nuns or meditators' attainments when they do dana. Mm -hmm. Will this way reduce the wholesome results of the dana? We cannot say this is reducing wholesome dana. Okay, the main thing is when we are going to do dana, you have to offer what you are, how you as you feel happy. It doesn't matter. This is your choice. As long as you don't regret your dana, is good enough. We cannot say reduce, right? In the case of dana, there must be receiver. There must be donor, there must be donation, there must be like a generous, generous mind or willingness to offer. When we have all these conditions, it depends on how strong you are. There will be good result. So Bora also mentioned which area dana and dada you have to choose the receiver. What does have already said? But for a while, check in. How is it how is it attain, attainment? This is not, not really very good habit. Right? Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, sir. Có vài loại rau dùng để nấu ăn, con dùng để nấu với nước uống. Uh, Vanami said, some of the vegetable which is for cooking for the purpose of the for food, but I am using this one from the the sale. Uh, mm -hmm. I am using to cook, uh, cook in the, to make a tea drink in the afternoon mm -hmm. with the purpose of kill uh, to kill some disease. So is that mm -hmm. allowable? To treat some disease? Yes, yes, sir. to okay. heal some disease. Okay, so that means for this kind of treatment, this means your own properties or monastery properties. This is also one thing we have to know. Right? In monastery properties, then we shall not use it. Oh, your own properties, okay? It's up to you, it doesn't matter. One more thing here. What about? To offer Sangha, for example, right? if you have already bhavali talk or maybe bodily or bhavali inclined already or already said or already write down something, I will offer this one to the bandi or the, the monastery, for example. In this case, you should not use for other purpose. It should be only for the thing you have already said. It, then it will be a little bit different. For us, as long as your own property, it doesn't matter. Okay? The main thing is. Uh, said all oh, the so. second second part said oh. uh, mm -hmm. all said oh, in the case of, we see that the biko or the sale in park if they are any park they wear the brown color robe but after mm -hmm. they go to other place they wear some biko wearing the yellow robe and uh, in this case did they commit any apathy because of the change their robe color in this case we cannot say this is a problem it's, it's not really a big problem as long as the, 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 the rope they wear is allowable, it's okay. Allowable material, allowable, right? No, 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 allowable material and allowable color, it will be okay. Not really good problem. Okay? Yes, sir. Another question, sir. Kính bạch ngày sir, nếu một vị tỷ kheo không nói mà nhắn tin qua mạng cho người nữ, uh, Vanami mean, said, if the people, he didn't say, didn't say uh, verbally say, but he messes through the messenger, uh, messenger or any type of message like WhatsApp or Viber to talk mm -hmm. to the ladies that uh, mm -hmm. with the lovely words like I miss you, I love you, I want to see you, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to kiss you. <laughs> Vậy thì có phạm vào tội ta. So is that, did he commit the Sangha de Sesa? Và nhìn những hình ảnh này. And also we see the, this uh, sexy photo, the naked ladies on the, on the, on the, Internet. So, did he commit sangha by just seeing the naked ladies? Okay, seeing is actually it will be different. Seeing is not sangha nisesa. Seeing is this is just dukata. We can say like that. Huh? For about like 
message, you know, just hit a message or maybe anyway, not only like a messenger or anything, you know. What about going to get, what, what about social media you use? As soon as you write something improper, uh, for example, again, ah, oh, your face is like this, a very nice, very beautiful, you know, it will be one offense. No, no sunglasses are yet. If you talk about something that is, huh? maybe like a taboo, huh? like a, something improper for the people, then there will be some analysis. Okay, one more thing about the, okay, talking about, you know, we have column bow. Above the column bow, also, under the knee, you know, if we talk about all these things above the column bow and uh, any body part, above the column bow and under the knee, it is, one offense, okay? No, not that serious. Otherwise, like under the column bone, above the knee. Any other body part, except in genital organs or sex organs, it will be another offense. If you talk about the sex or, sex, or the genital organs, right? And this will be sanity. So another thing is, okay, as in the sentence that you may also have seen, as a young boy talk to young girl, like a boyfriend talk to girlfriend, right? That kind of things. It's very, very, very risky. Be careful, right? Okay. Dear Siado, how should ordained person address their parents, auntie, uncle? If we call their name directly, they may feel unhappy and disrespected. Oh, in this case, it doesn't matter. This is their related. It doesn't matter. It's okay. I say, say, no. I think this question they mean the person who addressed their parents as auntie and, and uncle. Oh, yeah. parents? No, parents. Yeah, yes, yes, say, no. Oh, like this. Their parents, oh, sorry, the big who addressed his parents as uncle, something like that. Uh, yes, say, no. I think this question, yes. The, the big who addressed their parents as auntie and uncle. Yes. No, it should not be. <laughs> oh, look. So let me, we should say like it, my devotees or my father, mother, it doesn't matter. We can say like that, right? Dad or man, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Oh, uh, uh, so, sorry, sir. Oh, this question means if the, uh, how should the orient person address their parents or their auntie, uncle, if call their name directly so they may feel unhappy and disrespectful? Yes. Yeah, so how That's should, it. yeah, yeah. Okay. How should they call? Okay. We, can, we can say like father, mother, it doesn't matter. We can say like this. It doesn't matter. This is our own parents, right? Our own related, it doesn't matter. Okay, we can say like uncle, auntie, uh, I'm, I'm father, mother, we can say like that, man, dad is okay. Yes, Yaro. For a conversation to be considered a lapana, a bhikkhu uh -huh. must have the intention to expect gain, fame, and respect. Uh -huh. If he only speaks very generally without such expectation, it will not be considered as lapana or wrong livelihood. Okay, so okay, when we talk about this one, right? Lapana. Lapana okay, this one is like initiating, you know. Lapana, right? Lapana is like initiating. Initiating for donations. Even in the statement in already mentioned, it's an initiating for donations. That's why. Italy, he must expect for gay or something, donations, right? So if we say that, as you say now, we just just say normally or by binds accidents, is we have we just be like that, it will be exception. For other case, you know, even in the translation already mentioned, right? And I should talking about donations. Okay. Uh, dear Siado, may I ask for open marriage? Is it breaking the five precept or not? Open marriage means the couple are open for each other to have other partners outside their marriage. This means they are telling the truth and not keeping secrets of the other relationships they have. Uh -huh. Okay. As long as both of them agree to live like that, we cannot say that is Kamsumi Chachara. Okay. okay well, in the sense of Kamsumi Chachara, for example, like a husband may allow his wife to live with another man. 
in this case, we're going to say this is a break of reserves. Some, okay, for example, I haven't known some cases. Some of the ladies are prostitutes, but they have a husband. The husband also allow her uh, to work as a prostitute, for example. In this case, it will be okay. We're going to say break of reserves. Yes, if we want to say it's truth but bitter for the devotee, if we say the devotee may hate us or give up their meditation practice and cultivation, should we still say it for our intention? If our intention is only for the benefit of the devotee, but the devotee may not be able to understand this intention. Okay, okay I understand. Okay. In this case, you know, then if like it. A better truth or something like a understandable truth. We just, we just keep quiet, don't say anything. Right? Sometimes we have to, when we change the topic, it's happened to me many times like this. Sometimes I also know they have some problem. But if I say, they will be happy because I have to, avoid, I have to change the topic and also I have to like, I like another, another way, you know, like this. So there are many ways to avoid that kind of things. If there is undesirable truth, we should avoid. Don't say what they want to hear too much. Just guide them what to do. Okay? Even in the solution, you know, if we have like a system, in India, we have like a Dignan Samatra, you know, one of them is like covering up. We're going to hide it up. Just keep it as nothing happened. It will be more beneficial for the listeners or devotees, okay? Shadow, I have a question, Shadow. Uh, mm -hmm. In the Adi Kan, Kando Pama Sutta in Anguti, Anguttara Nikaya, mm -hmm. 772, the, the, the parable of the bonfire, it mm -hmm. explains the consequences of the monk that behave badly. Is there mm -hmm. any other sutta that explains the consequences for the bhikkhu that survive on the wrong lifehood? That's the first question. Uh, uh -huh. The second question is uh, regarding, um, I'm sorry, but the, there's a bhikkhu that survived on feng shui reading for the home, feng shui reading for the land, uh, uh -huh. what, and also uh, offense by carrying babies, carrying uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. or playing with the dog or the pets. What kind uh -huh. of offense is this? May Saido explain it to us? Thank you, Saido. Uh -huh. Okay. Actually, for about the... <clears throat> okay. You, you, have kind of you have already said that one, right? Yeah. We I'm also. Uh, okay. I know. I know that's what that's okay. I think something similar to that also because we'll find one sutras. Sorry, which one? Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember that one. Okay. There were many other similar sutras. You know, even okay. in Angkota, also even in Winnie Apitaka, we have some parts about. Especially about okay, parajika, fourth parajika, I think. You mentioned anything about the same things or immoral persons. Okay. You know, the another one, okay. as we say now, like a feng shui reading, that kind of things, actually, wrong livelihood, we can say like that. It's very, okay. very clear, wrong livelihood. Right? Okay. If he just work for his own monastery, it doesn't matter. If we work for people or devotees, and eh? By doing so, if he can earn money or if he can get some donations, there's a wrong livelihood. Similarly, for about the playing with the pet or kids, it should be sometimes, you know, we must say like playing with the kids, just like, a, you know, when we are going to talk to the kids, we must talk kindly, you know, mm -hmm. just to show our kindness, we, have, we just say very kindly, in this case, exceptions, right? Okay. If we are not kindness, then the kid will not approach us, right? They will, they will, they will not come to us. This is the one thing. Mm. Another thing, like taking care of the kids. This is a wrong livelihood. Very clear. Taking oh. care of the kids, right? Carrying here and there on the labs or something like that, right? Yes, yes. And th th this is a okay. wrong livelihood. Yeah? We, we must not do it. So, as we say now, uh, like a... Uh, how do, Okay, anyway, any kind of wrong, wrong life like this, you know, this, as long as we say, we say wrong life, this is the orphan already, according to Winnea. Oh, okay. At least, at least, Dukata, right? 
or to Kata? Very, very clear. Uh, to Kata is very clear already. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 Thank you, Sado. 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 Yes, Sado. We met a teacher who often scold or use abusive words to his disciples a lot. But according mm-hmm. to the teacher, his mind is meta mind when he is scolding. Is it mm-hmm. possible a person scolding aggressively but his mind is wholesome mind? Uh huh. This is very complicated, right? Actually, whenever abusive words mean okay, what kind of abusive words? Okay, it depends on what kind of abusive words. For example, like uh, sometimes very harmful for the devotees. You dislike some some brother. You may use only the the one you you dislike about about the sexual organ or about the like you know something very very taboo words again taboo. Right? It, it is you this kind of, this kind of words. This offense we cannot we cannot use. Whether we have good mind or bad minds, we I have already say there are ten types of abusive words. We cannot use any of them. If we use, this is it. Partitia, and for lay person, if we if lay person, it will be another offense. If we abuse speaku, it will be partitia. But the main point is, if we have if we use abusive words, we cannot say meta mind. It will be different from parents and children. Sometimes better was call. So a scolding and abusing were two different words. Scolding is okay. Scolding will be because of good, good intention, we will score. This is one thing. For about abusive words, it's a difference. We cannot say this is a scolding, right? So, okay, we have to understand abusive words and scolding, two different things. If we use abusive words, it's not allowable. If we score for the benefit of devotees or disciples, this is it. Okay, we cannot say this is abusive words. Uh, dear Seattle, if a teacher often degrade and continuously degrade his disciples unreasonably, but the teacher explains that this is the disciple's bad karma, that's why the disciple get this treatment from the teacher. So should the disciple accept the teacher's explanation that this is his bad karma and continue to tolerate the abusive treatment of the teacher? This is a very bad orally. Don't associate with that kind of teacher. I just recommend, right? You know, actually, I myself say, teacher, I will do, no, not do this kind of things. Oh, dukkha, huh? Okay. okay, so I just recommend, don't associate with that kind of teacher. This is not because of that karma. Vanami said, oh, in the Pachidiya number no. 9, in 227, uh, Bhikkhu rules, also say that the Bhikkhu should not reveal the another Bhikkhu offense to the not, uh, anu, but I mean, uh, not a non-orient person. Like yeah. some or lay people, uh, yeah. but without any reason. If only accept the case of the biko, uh, the sangha allow him to, to say. So why so said? Uh, why only the the sangha allow? Then he can say he can reveal the offense of the other biko, not otherwise. Okay, so actually we must you get with well, that we must train that biko. We can have that bhikkhu, right, first. Then sometimes, okay, there will be some problem between devotees and bhikkhus, right? Okay, one more thing. When he talks that kind of things to his family member, for example, okay, for example, okay, some bhikkhu will talk about my mistakes to my family member, like my, my father, my mother, or my brothers, my sister, for example. They will get angry, right? You know, then it will be very bad for the devotees also. Even we talk about here, Samudhi, you know, allowed by Sangha. This one is actually what kind of offense and what kind of family limited already. So what are that kind of that kind of allowance? We cannot say. Okay? Or for the good of devotees. There are some people, they are not clever, you know. Talking about their son in front of their parents. Talking about their brother in front of their sister, for example, like that. That's why we have to consider all these things, okay? When the Siado, just now Siado, have mentioned the Javana Chittakana, if it is not uh, con- under control, all the other Chittakana is lost control. Yeah. So 
if someone is a aman, Amanasikara, the Amanasikara is the Watapana in the five door viti, the Pantya Dora viti, and the uh, Manodora, uh, Manodora Vajana in the Manodora viti. So, would that affect the Jawana? That means to determine the Jawana's Kusala or Akusala. That's, okay. So, in this case, that means Jawana doesn't have his own power to protect, to control himself. Only the Watapana or the Manodora Jawana play the responsibility of guarding the Jawana. Actually, Mental process are uh, not, not that simple, right? Okay, we can say that if we say Manodora Vajana, it's also Arapaja mind. So that means if we can't, we do, our mind does not advance there, right? We can understand like that according to your statement. It will be very complicated. But here, when we talk about Vinaya, okay, one more thing, just for your information, right? When we talk about Vinaya, we should, we should avoid talking about mental process or anything. It will be very complicated, very messy. We're going to get the main point of the practice. When we are going to practice the Nama Rupa, at that time, we should talk about this kind of topic. It will be easier, right? Okay, one more thing. You know, as you, there's a question already. I have to answer, right? So when we talk about Manasikara, wise intention, wise intention, then we have like a Aramana Bhati Padaka, when we see there will be Fido Arabatin consciousness, this is called Aramana Pati Paragamana Sikara. The another one is uh, the Javana Pati Padaka. This is as you say now, what happened? Now? This is Javana Pati Padaka Manasikara. We can understand like that. So although we say what happened is the most determination, but actually it, it just means we release in the mind. Right? Actually, they cannot determine. They can just say, they can just say oh, this is good and bad. Their minds are free. If they see good, they see it's a good. Sometimes for the practitioners, as well as a very high quality, like Arahat or something like this, then in their minds, they can check easily. Right? They have mostly their wise attention all the time. That's why they don't have our mind. For ordinary people, it's natural. It's because of our habits in our daily life. Right? When we talk about arising, investment on the door, it will be very, very, very messy. You know, sometimes because of showing shown by the Deva, sometimes because of show by like a, um, because of our like a negligence, there can be many other reasons of the one. Sometimes, sometimes out of control, sometimes under our control, it will be very messy. So for that later, when we talk about middle process, I have to explain a bit more in detail. Okay. When I'm here, though, mm -hmm. uh, in some monastery, if there is some emergency condition, for example, the outbreaks of the COVID-19, and always uh, no electricity, lack of food. Uh, if the monks, in this case, he, if the monks, in this case, uh, ask from the lay devotees for offerings with that in this type of emergency cases would that consider breaking the rules and if the lady was this if invitations to the sangha give invitation to the sangha anybody can ask from her whatever the sangha needs or not okay so actually if they have already invited like that we can ask for donation it doesn't matter okay because invitation already. If there's invitation or from a family member, it will be okay. We can we can ask for donations. See, so the first part of question, uh, in emergency cases without invitation, can yeah, the, yes. uh -huh. okay. in emergency yeah. cases can they ask? That one is okay. We cannot find anything right emergency case. In the crisis, okay, actually in Mahawaka, we have a one rules like that. In the image, like in the crisis or disasters, there were some exceptions. But no, that one's actually already dismantled by the draw and the Buddha. Right? We don't have any any exception for this. Okay. Yeah, the next part of the question is that if a monk seeing a child having a danger, can he 
protect the child without breaking the rules? Okay, in this case, it will be exception. This is danger. No, no, this is not like, uh, not for king or queen anything. It's okay. And that means that part of the question, if a monk act like the king or the uh, leader to oppress other people or try to get something from him or try to degrade, denigrate oh. in order to get the dana, this is a micha, micha ajiva. Sure. But if, he's, if he do this, not for getting the gain, but mm -hmm. to let them work for him. For example, the bhikkhu oppress the samanera so that he won't, he won't participate in some activity or, or even to disrobe. Or he try to uh, oppress the lay person or oh, he tried to oppress the ordained person to disrupt first and become a lay person to service to to supply service to the monk for one or two years before ordination. Would they consider breaking the rules? Okay, this one is you know breaking rules is okay. We cannot say breaking rules or anything. Now this one is you know not very good, not very good manner, not very good behavior. If, like for the first part, like is they do for an oppress and they ask the, the king to oppress them, right? For a king or something like this. In this case, each person how much he can earn or how much they they get lost. But second part for some leaders, so because to, you know, he forced to destroy or something like this. This kind of thing is you know destroying. It depends on what kind of what he used. It will be different, right? It, it, we can say different types of offense. Right? To destroy, for example, like it, but it, we have a one thing, this is our rules. Talk about Barajika, right? Accuse, accuse another people with Barajika, then destroy. That kind of case will be very serious. There are many other ways forcing somebody to disrupt. Okay, it depends on the way he used or the what he used, or many, many different cases, it will different offenses. This breaking rules here, okay? Yes, when the Missyado. If a bhikkhu reject, insists that he doesn't want to reject any donation from other monks, he just accepts donation from lay person, would they consider suitable? Second part, if, okay. if a lay person notice that there is a bhikkhu or nuns who has committed uh, some big, big some minor rules, then he, how should he how should he pay attention so that he won't lose his own faith? The sun, the devotees see the bhikkhus and sellers, or in basin, breaking, breaking, uh, breaking rules, yeah, breaking precept. How should he pay attention, means the manasikara, so that he won't lose his own faith or even uh, have anger? Okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first part, right? First part is uh, if a monk rejects donation from other monks but just accepts donation from lay person, would that consider okay. appropriate? I, I see, I see, okay. So that one is, uh, okay, well, we have a one statement in Angota Nikaya. Accepting whatever donation we get is also not good. Rejecting whatever donation is also not good. We must have enough properties. That is, what mentioned in Angota Nikaya. Anyway, so whether Beku offer or lady body offer, it doesn't matter. And sometimes, okay, it depends on the devotees. Sometimes they don't wish to, he don't wish to get from that kind of devotees. For example, the devotees are very poor. He don't wish to get from them. Out of compassion, it will be different. Sometimes devotees are very poor. He, they will offer poor quality. He don't wish to get poor quality. That's why he rejects his Agusala, right? Very clear. So, okay, in this case, it depends on what's his intentions. Also, what's the situation between the devote, devotees and the bhikkhus, right? It depends on all other situations we have to decide. We're going to say easily in this kind of situation. If seeing someone, if, see, uh, if a lay person see a bhikkhu or uh, uh, a nun speaking the precept, how should he pay attention so that he won't lose faith or have anger? Okay, in this case, we have to understand two different things. Personality and dharma, two different things. We may have different personality. The person, if we can change our personality according to the dharma, 
then we become better person. Sometimes we cannot change our personality, then we can improve ourselves. So that means just think about the dharma. Okay, don't think about personality. Okay, so this is a, his behavior or her behavior, not the behavior of dharma or vinaya. Right? Then think about many other good bhikkhus or many many other good names or good orange persons. It will be more convenient or more comfortable in your mind. Okay. When let me see though. If if someone see or hear the meditation teacher a piku, and then he heard the piku or see the piku address a lady saying that beautiful lady. So in this way of addressing lady, would that consider appropriate? Uh huh. Okay, this one's also a little bit, little bit, little bit risky, right? Beautiful lady means in front of that lady or absent of that lady. There are many other situations, right? So anyway, in this case, should we? That that question is not not quite not not quite complete, right? Anyway, then okay. as as teacher, okay, sometimes, right? Then he may say like a good, sometimes he may say bad. There can many other things. The main thing is we should not talk about lady like this. Right, beautiful or like a nice or sexy or something like that. If we say people say like this, it's been a bit strange. Okay. Yes, sir. Vanami said, "King, thưa ngài sir, Vanami said, according to the Pali in the Sutta or in the Tibetaka, Hangusi is a lady devotee. How do a lady devotee address the biko? In Vietnamese, can we say that con con? Tiếng Pali nghĩa là." Kumara or Kumari in Pali, mm-hmm. or yeah, the the lady would address the bhikkhu as I in Pali in English I, but in Vietnamese con con here means said or it means like some we we address the the um, the kid we say tell to their father and mother I mean in Vietnamese con mean very very mm-hmm. yeah very polite what yeah mm-hmm. yeah so she say here the Kumara or Kumari. Actually, so, in Pali, you know, we we'll address the bhikkhu, right? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, addressing okay. bhikkhu. Yeah. Okay, we should talk. Bande is good enough, right? Bande in Pali, no, no, Kumara. Kumara is a you know young boy, like like a prince, young prince, something like this. Okay. Yes, sir. According to Indonesian culture, we mm-hmm. call people with Mister and Misses who are more senior with us. But due to globalization, some officers are following other cultures. For example, it is allowed to call seniors by their names directly. Mm-hmm. I've tried to be polite by calling them with the prefix Mister and Missus, but instead got scolded. If mm-hmm. the senior allow us to call their name directly without Mister and Missus, and we call them by their name directly but with a respective mind, does this mm-hmm. still categorize as akusala? <coughs> Oh, yeah, because that's come from the mind, right? <coughs> okay, so actually, I've already said that one about the Ajara Sila, you know, Ajara Sila. We have already talked about Ajara Sila, but not many. There are some other missing parts, anyway. There are also I mentioned Ajara Sila slightly, a little, bit, a little bit, according to the place we live, according to the religion, lineage, or the culture. It is a sub discipline. There can be many different types of Ajara Sila. So if they themselves are savage, this is already culture. Yeah, as long as it's a good culture, accepted by the community is okay. But sometimes, you know, although they allow, the community disagree that one. At, at that time, you have, to, you have to consider. Okay. So if there's a good culture, accepted by community, okay, you can do it. Sometimes they're changing the culture. Then okay. they are not ready, right? At that time, don't do it. Don't say it. Although they allow you to do use their na- own name, okay. Uh, dear Shadow, if devotees already know a bhikkhu is living with wrong livelihood, is it okay for devotees to keep donor to the bhikkhu? The purpose of the devotees to keep donation to the bhikkhu is to achieve dana parami. Okay, so in the sense of dana parami, you have to consider. 
about your dana. So if we are going to talk about dana barami, it must be beneficial for the receivers. A receiver has a round livelihood. So it will be for the benefit of himself, not for the benefit of sasana. We have to consider that one, right? So this is also not, not, not very wise to offer. So in this case, I don't recommend to continue offering this kind of because of this kind of community. Okay? Dear Seattle, is Ata Sili Silani Siale allowable to offer something to devotees? Is it considered as wrong livelihood for Ata Silani Siale? Is it okay if devotees receive something offered by the Ati Ata Silani Siale? Okay, so actually, although we talk about Atta Sila or Dasa Sila or any other Sila, when we are ordained, we have to think about our behavior. Atta Sila is also observed by, undertaken by lay devotees. So, what is the difference between lay devotees and ordained person? So, for our pure livelihoods, we have to consider all the things and mention in the Dikanikaya. They are mentioned Samana or Brahmana. It can be Buddhist or non Buddhist. So, as the Sayali is a Buddhist, so we should follow all the things mentioned in the Vasudhi Maka or Brahma Jara Sutta. Right? It will be more beneficial for donors. We have to think about for the good of donors. Okay? Can you make a note of it? When I said, oh, we are for the lay people, we are householder, the lay people, confident the now day. We how we to uh how we do in order to keep our verbal body and the body bodily action and the mind mm -hmm. to produce more kusala kama valent now the chain and how to avoid the akusala kama. Nếu một người luôn luôn tìm lỗi. If somebody always go and fight for and criticize and telling very accused word uh, to the, the relative của mình with, với with the uh, akusala mind with the not not a good mind. So what karma they we they we they will have in the future? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the karma is it. Very complicated, right? Anyway, if we have to listen to anything like that, we also have a lot of agusala. If possible, we should avoid that kind of people. You know, we need to have, you know, according to the question, we can also understand what you mean. If we have good associations, good environments, we can accumulate more wholesome deeds. If we are in bad community, we can accumulate more unwholesome deeds. Although we wish, Although we don't wish, it will happen because sometimes, although we don't wish to hear, we have to listen, right? It happened in the final arts. That's why, okay, do avoid our whole sun, although do, do increase whole sun, you might have a good association, good community. For our whole sun deeds, our whole sun gamma, you ask. It depends on how strong his defilements. I have already listed out how that the, the karma and right? Let's when we talk about the what you do to it, I had already mentioned, it depends on the finance, the efforts, and the virtues of other people, the, the, like the person who is accused who is accused, accused or abused. So it depends on all the situation we can say strong and weak agusala karma. Then, okay, if I, say, if I say in brief, I cannot say what kind of Akusala Kama. It depends on how is their mind. And also, how strong their defilements, how strong their efforts, how is it the person he accused or abused. Yeah, but ngày nếu trong quá khứ mình đã vu khống, Phan Nam said, or if in the past, in the past we already done some accusing other people and criticize other people, mà trong người đó, but uh, that one, that people we are accused is the pure one with the one with the sila with the five precept, the eight precept, or the ordained person. 
the good moral orient person vậy nghiệp và quả mình phải chịu so the karma and, and the karma result here is làm sao vậy vậy quả nghiệp mình phải chịu là gì what is karma result we have to bear in the future làm sao để giảm bớt how to reduce the akusala karma uh, we already have done mm -hmm. yes okay in this case we can ask for forgiveness to right to recover from this kind of mistakes especially if we ask for forgiveness if we practice vipassana in this very life it will be helpful we can also achieve right okay it can be supporting cause of nibbana but if we have already accused good people it depends on the power of his sila and also it depends on what kind of attainment he has for example like it if we accuse a noble person ariya is ariya wara kama he will be go into hell right then if somebody that accuses just ordinary people it depends on all that they you know, have already said if the kind of thing happen in their near death moment they can be reborn in the hell next life they have they have to suffer from that kind of accusation again by like that okay So it will be very, very many different things according to the persons he accused. He, he, he has already accused. Okay? Etawata janamehi sambadam bunya sambadam sabbe dewa numo dandu sabbe buddha numo dandu sabbe sadha numo dandu sabbha sambadhi siriya Idam me nyadinam hodu sukida hondu nyadeyo Idam me nyadinam hodu sukida hondu nyadeyo Idam me nyadinam hodu sukida hondu nyadeyo Idam me bunyang asawakaya wahang hodu Idam me bunyang nibanasa pachyo hodu Mama punya bagam sabha sadanam bajimi te sabe me samam punya bagam lavandu sadu sadu sadu